it's got um, little gaps in it. Yeah. So, um, we're about to see front. What's your name? I'm Chris. And wherever you come from? Yeah, uh, near Hunley. Yep. Yep. Just come down here every now and then, especially when it's going to be nice and sunny like this. So, how did you know it was on today? Did you give Bruce a ring um, or a text? Or? Seems like it's pretty much every Sunday is sort of yeah. something. Yeah, he's been doing that. Especially on a like, sunny day like that, like this. So you come down and you bought Subway here, so that's good? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's right right over there. So tell us about your one My compared one? to, yeah. Well, what sort of foam is this? I don't know. That's meat pack. That's all meat pack. Is it? Yeah, my, it's my whole yeah, thing is to make... Have you tried it? Well, as you can see, it's very close to flying. <laughs> Some wires are not connected. So you've got, yours is FPV, isn't it? Um... Uh, not quite. I'm just sort of trying to get it a bit more stable um, before I put an FPV on that. Okay, so got your little bits and pieces. So this is a plan and you've made it out of just sort of board, isn't it? Yeah, just uh, the board you get from, um, I got it from Bunnings. You probably get it from somewhere else maybe. And how much is it a metre, a square metre? Uh, one board was $9, I think. Can I ask you... Uh, 20 can, by 30 inches. Can, can I ask you to go and get meat packs and put it on... No, no, seriously, put it on the same plan and just come up with the meat pack flyer because... Actually, you know, this is five millimetres thick, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like it. But how does it bend, though? Yep, so all you do, because they have big ones in there, I think they charge between 10 cents or... Could you get uh, that, like half, like half a wing, half of the wing? Can you get ones that... No, no, you just go in and buy meat packs and start putting it together. And hot glue looks like it works pretty good, eh? And just use hot glue, because basically this is the... The idea was so that kids could actually come up with a, a plane. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. buy meat packs and then the way they go. What about that, though? That's not going to last, is it? No, 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 that was just, as I said, I had some spare hot glue. I'd like to see a fly, I quite like the idea of these, um, what do you call it? What do you call it? It's like a truss, there's triangle. There's a name for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are just the contours of the meat pack, so I just employed them. <laughs> okay. So, what would you, where did you get your bits and pieces that go onto those three wires? Um, I got them online, I think. Yeah. So what did you spend for, like, the two little... The ESC, you mean? Yeah, ESC yeah. and receiver. The receiver was about 12 US dollars and the ESC was about 8 US dollars. So about 20 USD for the receiver and ESC. And then the motor was probably about 12 US dollars as well. So it's at 32 USD, 50 New Zealand dollars. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And that's the running gear. And do you run a two, three, or four cell? Um, this Battery. one's a three cell. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so um, two or three. No, no, this is probably three is better. Yeah, it was pretty good, eh? Sure. There you go, i hold that. You just carry on yeah. eating your lunch and chatting about it. So how did you get the foam to bend like that? Do you have to cut the back end and put grooves yeah. in it? On one side you just sort of put a huge big crease down it. Yeah. Like with a blunt pencil or a... Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Or a point pen or something like that. And then just sort of slowly fold it over, not too quickly. Um, and then get it to where it's sort of Mostly in that shape. Yeah. And then you just slap some hot glue on the other side and hold it down for a bit and it uh, sticks pretty good. Yeah. It's just paper. So hot glue and paper go, go well. Go well yeah. together, yeah. Yeah. And has it ever flown? Yep. Um, I've done, I think, three batteries through it. Oh, excellent, yeah. Yeah, I actually put this out on my YouTube channel uh, yesterday. What's your name of your YouTube channel? Shout it's out to it. iForce 2D. So if I was going to type it in, I'd type E. Y E uh, I just I as an iPhone. Okay, I and then force, force F O R S F O R C E C E two D. And then like two as a numeral two yep. and D as in and then that's that's your link for the YouTube channel, okay? Yes. How, how many subscribers have you got? Um I think it's about sixteen thousand Okay, I'll add one to that tonight. Oh cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, this RC stuff. So, yeah, so how, we, how does, I see you got a hat cam, that's awesome. Yeah, that's for my YouTube videos too, because you can't really, like, hold a camera and fly at the same time. Yeah. And I find that the hat cam, when, you've, when you're flying the plane, you're looking around at it like this, and you, it gets you the perfect, like, you know, position automatically, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bruce does that too. Yeah, no, no. Oh, he's got one too now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, I've never seen one stuck underneath the brim. I've always yeah, thought just, that's the right um, place to do it. And then I've never seen anyone, anyone. So is your your footage is all upside down? 
no, you can turn, tell the Mobius to pre-flip it before you record. Yes. Um, which saves a lot of processing time. Okay. But I just thought it would be better to be close to my eyes to get like closer to. Yeah, no, no. My it's. Eyes. I mean, it so no wonder you got sixteen thousand subscribers because they all know that you're an in, innovative. <laughs> First time I've seen well, the it. The thing is, I, I used to live in, in Tokyo in this big city with lots of people around right there. Yeah. And when you're walking around with the camera up here, people notice it a bit more, and they're like, "What's this guy doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if it's under here, they don't you see can't. It so much. You know, you honestly Especially like. If it's black. Like if you turn on the side, just do a side profile. See, I can't tell you got a camera or anything in there. <laughs> And so, you know, and so for probably 300 degrees, I can't tell you got a mm. camera. It's only sort of, mm. yeah. Very covert. <sighs> mm. So what do you, how do you, feel, what, how long ago did you start your YouTube channel? Um, a couple of years ago, probably. Yeah, and who, who do you follow? Like, I've been watching this guy, Casey, from New York City recently. Oh, I think I know who you mean. I don't subscribe, I've seen a few of his videos. Yeah. Um, and he, he yeah, no, no, that, it's quite funny in New York City. Fires, yeah, one of those. And the thing was, he was said, "Oh, is it, what's about live streaming?" He said, "Look, I'd rather have um, a, a quality product than to watch live streaming." You know, so that was his critique. But he goes around the world and lectures on it and oh. shows his videos and stuff. And he's a marathon runner, and so he's a very focused sort of a person and so that's why people I think like his videos because everything he does is to the nth degree focused to to absurdity you know what I mean not absurdity it works in the, um, and it's so vibrant where he um, lives yeah. so tell us about your because he's got four million view, you know, so yeah, when did you start I, you know, your I one I see his uh, videos come up in the sidebar all the time yeah. um, I do recently I've been doing RC model stuff quite often mostly quad copies so I've got quad copies in there yeah um, and just the last few months I've started flying some planes a bit as well. Good. Um, and I, my job is a programmer, so I do programming for a little bit of, um, do a little bit of work on the flight controllers every now and then. Now it's an interest of mine, so I did basic on an Apple IIe was my first programming. Same, yeah. And I was about nine or ten years old. and exactly, I, same as me. Yeah, and I got the um, keys from the principal and um, I'd use it on the weekends. That sounds sort of similar to me. I got the keys from my, my teacher, not the principal. Yeah. But uh, before before we had one at home, I used to use the one at school. That's right. And, and when I was supposed to be at class, I think. And uh, then the paddle wheel came out, and Night Driver was my favourite game. Yeah, so what Night Driver is, is dots, so the centre line dots yeah, and the two outside. Like that, right? Yeah, 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 and all you do is turn the paddle either yeah. side to stay inside the dots. Actually, I had a, because um, my parents knew I was into computers and everything, and one of the friends of our family had a guy who was their son who was, uh, he must have been about university age or something, and they, they wanted me to learn how to program a computer properly instead of just playing games or something. Yeah. And so we went to this guy's place, and he said, look, sit down there. And I watched him in about an hour, probably, he made that, that dots game with the race. No, that's awesome, Just yeah. with, like, ASCII, like, it was the letter A was your car or something. Yeah, yeah. Dots were, like, asterisks or something coming down like this. And I was like, wow. And he just had a... make stuff like this. Yeah, I know, and like, he, had oh, a, he would have had a random generator in the distance yeah. to show where the actual road and the yeah. plus one or plus two goes left or right, and then yeah. the road and would and unfold it from there. And detects when your A is on top of the asterisk and... Uh, so when I was at when I was at school, um, I remember challenging this one guy in class to to make the fastest pi generator. You know, like to calculate um, pi. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, he beat me at it, but it, yeah, well, here you go. You know what I mean? There's a number of different ways to do pi. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you an interesting story. So I was coming back up from a hoka ticket because, and I stopped at pizza. Anyway, there's a guy there, and I said, "Oh, what do you get up to?" And he says, oh, "I work for Apple." I said, "Oh, yeah, what are you doing here?" And he says, oh, "I get six uh, weeks off a year, so I come fly fishing in New Zealand." Mm. I said, "Oh, that's interesting. We'll share the pizza, sit on the table, and we had a bit of a chat together." And uh, it turned out that he came from the algorithm lab, the maths lab in, in Apple, and he, him and his team had just put together two of the latest um, of Pi. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they'd come out with the last two mm -hmm. definitive side of things. And there, and he'd said it, it was done through factorising as opposed to another method, which was a harder thing to do. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, it was just... It was, so you knew what he was talking about. Oh, it was, and I said to him, <laughs> what about this mouse? He says, nah, because um, Jobs was still alive at that stage. He said, nah, he just hates mice. Really? Yeah, so if there's one thing I could ask Apple is to put on the... Um, 
iPad, the ability to do a backspace, because when I put my big finger on the word, it's always one letter, and if I could just have a back, backspace, you know, like to move it one letter, you, you've got to, sorry, you've got to delete, it's the forward one, mm -hmm. so you can delete stuff as well as you, but just to move forward through the word, so you Reading don't... And so when you put your finger on, if you don't get your finger in the right spot, it's one letter the wrong place to delete a letter, for example. So if you could push a button that just moves it in front and then delete. An arrow key, just one arrow key. Yeah, I've often thought that too. Exactly, and so that's my big ask. So hopefully this video makes it into Apple in next... Uh... Have you tried the swipe keyboard or whatever they call it on iOS? No. So you, if you're familiar with touch typing, it's quite good because you just sort of put your finger down and swipe across all the letters that are in that word and then lift your finger off. In, in one, one go. Yeah. And it'll detect from where you've moved what the likely candidates are for that English word, yeah. whatever language you okay. use. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try that. And yeah. it'll pop up with the candidates. Yeah. Or actually, it's, it usually gets the right one right off the bat. Well, the one that I, because I used to use a bit of Dragon, so we had a. Um, I'm a bit dyslexic, so I got access to this really grunty computer into the Waikato University Library, and what it did is it had a scanner and an um, OCS, uh, like o, an optical character record scanning. So I'd come in and grab a new book, they had a shelf with all the new books, I'd go into the lab and I'd put it down and scan the page mm. and I could crank that thing up to 600 words a minute and listen to it and understand it, scan, listen, scan, listen, scan, listen, so I could read a whole book in like two hours and so I used to chew through all the new books doing this, it was just an amazing reading experience. You can, you can actually understand quite a lot of speed. Well, I think uh, 300 words a minute was um, John F. Kennedy, the president that got assassinated, but that's what he could do if he really cranked it up in a speech. He was like one of the world's fastest. I noticed um, on YouTube you can set the speed of the video to 1.25 or 1.5 or something. A lot of people, probably some of my videos are a bit long and long-winded, but you can take a 10-minute video and make it a 6-minute video or something just by changing that. And spe it speeds up, so it sounds a little bit like chipmunks yeah, yeah, yeah. or something, but... So how do you do that when you when you're uploading a video? Uh, no, when when somebody's watching it. Yeah. You know, down in the bottom right, there's a you can that select cog? the resolution yeah. you want. Yes. I think it's probably under the cog. Yeah. yeah. And there's an option for speed as well. Okay, I'll go have it's a look at that. It's usually on one. Yeah. And you set it to like 1.5 or something. Too. Okay, no, that's yeah. all good. So getting back to the programming side of things, mm. so I had a big hiatus on that, and then I was I bought one of the first um, touch. It's called an iPad iPod Touch mm -hmm. that came into New Zealand. I pre-booked it th like two weeks before it, mm -hmm. this sort of thing, paid for it, and so I got into Objective-C programming, mm. which is an Apple proprietary side of things, yep. and that was before there was any such thing as an iPhone, that was before there was anything such That's thing right. as an iPad. Yep. So, and I've gone to a couple of um, global gaming jams, which is programming 48 hours of just programming. Oh, yep. Yep. Um, and then I've done a Google one, and the last Google one was interesting. Two, uh, not the last one, but the one before. What they had done is a lot of the computer guys that do this, and you get a job at the end of it with um, with Google, if you lucky. if you're lucky. But if you win the competition, and so then what happened was I found that I couldn't. What happened there was a programming language, so I changed to Python. So I then started to program. There was a, an application that allowed you on the iPad to do pro programming in Python. So I was all set three months before this competition, and it started, and away I went to do the Python programming. And I found when it came to upload my program into their thing, I couldn't get my code up. It would only select from photos to get it up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I, I wrote to them and said, look, and so I spent the whole mm. period of time working with the hardcore of Google people to try and correct this bug, so my pr thing, and I basically said, look, you got hundreds of millions of smartphones out there with this apps that, that can't even interact with what your thing. What about if you, um, like, emailed it to a uh, desktop computer or something? And oh, yeah, of course, but I, I just wanted to do it solely from an, um, yeah. an iPad. Um, so I then did screenshots of the, of the code mm -hmm. and then tried to upload that, but then what happens is the photos were too big, and so it would reject it because the file was too big, and there was no way of changing the file size. Mm -hmm. So it was just this, and I just enjoyed um, causing them a challenge with the header. So anyway, that was my contribution. I didn't get a job out of it, though. So, so where I am at the moment is the Raspberry Pi was introduced to me by Bruce, so I've been quite enjoying um, some of the mm -hmm. stuff that the Raspberry Pi from single core to a quad and now we're up to the next mm. one. Crazy, eh? It's just a little thing, right? Yep. Um, and so what languages are you programming at the moment? Um, 
useful. This stuff is all C. Yeah. Um, but for work, I do C plus plus. JavaScript and C plus plus and. Have you got any to, anything into Wolfram Alpha? I did beta no, testing no. on some of his early stuff, um, Wolfram Alpha, when it came out. So I beta tested that, and I've, he's an impressive guy. It's pretty impressive, that. I didn't Steven. quite understand the whole thing, what they were trying to do. I know, it's very powerful. It's sort of like everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, now it is. So they've got a programming language. And then Swift is the new Apple programming oh, yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be interested to talk to you if you ever had a look at Swift. Uh, and stuff. No, I, I did Objective-C for a while. I made, made a few iPhone apps. Uh, but I never really liked Apple's sort of, the way they sort of have their own way of doing everything. And yeah. They don't like to follow standards. Well, there's some standards they do, but... What were your two apps like, that you did in it? Um, I made a couple of games for iOS and... Um, are they still up online? I think so. Yeah. I'd like to buy one. How much are you charging for uh, it? One of them I did for somebody, so I don't yeah. know if that one's still up. It's, uh, and the one you did for yourself? That one might not be up either, because the other thing about Apple is they charge you $100 a year to keep... 140 Apple or 9 or something, yeah. Oh, sorry, 100 US, yeah. 140 yeah, New Zealand, I suppose. Um, but I wasn't really making that much money off the app. So I thought, well, I well, I paid. I, I, I paid when, it, it when they first came out because I've been right there from the start. There was a button you could push, and it had fourteen little fart sounds. I fart, it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I paid a dollar for that, but that guy did quite well. Mm -hmm. Over right a million downloads. Was great, apparently. Like I got in a little bit late. Like by the time I was putting mine up, there was already a million apps in the store or something. But now look at them. I mean, it, you, yeah. yeah. But now there's programs you can program in one language, and it will reprogram mm -hmm. right across all the platforms. Yep. So I yeah, those, yeah. yeah, that's part of the work I'm doing at the moment. We're using Flash, unfortunately, because we have um, a, a web app, a game that's in Flash that was originally started in the browser. Yeah. And that was fine. And then the, the company says, okay, we want to put this on mobile. We want to put it on Android and iOS, and we want to try and use as much of our code base that we have already to try and avoid doing you know, yeah. repeat work. So they said, oh, we'll use Adobe Air, which you might have heard of. It sort of lets you run a Flash program yeah. on iOS or Android. Um, but it's a kind of a pain, <coughs> pain in the butt. <coughs> Have you done Slither? Have you ever played the game Slither? <coughs> Slither the IO? Snake? Yes, the snake game. Can can you play that? Gets longer. Yeah, yeah. As you eat stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'll play that. Good, because uh, for me, there needs to be a 3D version in a, in a four-dimensional world. No, 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 a 3D, you imagine, and as you get bigger, and so it's on a spheroid like Earth, and as you get bigger, and so there's a horizon, and you cruise around and you do your stuff like that. See, yeah. yeah, so I just share that with you, because if it comes out in a language, you can dedicate it to that so tower up there. it's sphere, right? Spheroid. No, no, it doesn't matter if it's moving around. It just means that you start off as a little worm, in the, but as you get bigger and bigger, you just grow in height as well. Sounds hard to play though. Yeah, it's just I. That game is just such an addictive game. Have you played that um, Doodle Jump? No. Do you want me to play that Doodle Jump? Oh, that's no, right. I was just, just wondering because that's sort of one of those games that like you just start. Yeah, yeah. It's Doodle not jump. very interesting, but it just sort of keeps you playing. And oh well, we'll leave it at that. But thanks very much for <laughs> yeah. munching out on the, um, well, your yeah, food. I'm gonna go and fly something here. I haven't actually flown. Is that yet? Okay. Talk to you later. Cool.